Hi guys, Jeff at Slavens Racing. This video is about uh, electron carburetors and how they actually function, how they compensate for elevation, temperature, and humidity changes. But before I get into that, I want to give you a little bit of background on the company, uh, just to let you know where these guys are coming from and where they're going. So they were founded back in 1974, and they were the very first company to come out with a flat slide carburetor and a flat metering rod. Now, these days, almost all bikes have flat slides, but back in the 70s, they had round slides. So they were very popular in the early 70s. Uh, Kenny Roberts, also known as King Kenny, who was multi-time national flat track champion and multi-time world road racing champion. He used them extensively throughout his career. And they were also used as an upgrade option on Harleys, uh, Triumphs, and BSAs back in the 70s and 80s. And they were also a stock on the early KTMs and Pentons back in the 70s and early 80s. Then they kind of fell off the map for quite a long time, for a number of years, because the owner at that time was totally into drag racing and put all of his time, energy, and money and development time into drag racing and completely blew off the off-road community. Well, then about seven years ago, uh, Kevin and David came along, bought the company, and they've been on a, a mission to improve the product, update it, and uh, make it fit a lot of different models. So uh, really increase the application list. And you know, they're, they're hardworking guys uh, and they're definitely the real deal. I mean, the, the, even the US military uses them, uses their product and, and uh, development. So they're not a snake oil salesman, sales company, they're, they're the real deal. This is not just another widget uh, this is a very functional product that d delivers a lot of value. It increases fuel economy, you know, more linear and better throttle response, uh, increased torque and horsepower. And then, of course, the, the way it compensates for elevation and temperature changes. And it's also very easy for an inexperienced tuner to uh, work on this carburetor. So, t the way it, it works... We'll get into that now. Get this slide out of here. I'm going to set this over there. So this is the air filter side of the of the slide, and this is the engine side. And the engine side, the metering rod is flat, and on the air filter side, it's round. So as the air passes around both sides of the of the metering rod, you've got a high pressure area here where my fingers are. And then the flat side creates an eddy. If you're a kayaker or into some type of river water sports, you'll understand what eddies are. And you know, it's a low pressure area. So that flat slide, excuse me, flat side of the metering rod creates a, an eddy, a low pressure signal. And that low pressure signal changes as you go up or down in elevation or up or down in temperature. And that's how it compensates for, for those changes in elevation and temperature and humidity. That it, the Yeti does it. I mean, the Yeti is the secret to the whole thing. It's a, it's a very simple concept, but it's a very functional concept. Works very well. And these metering rods, you know, there's a, they have a number of them, and they're precision ground with uh, some CNC computer controlled equipment. You know, I had a guy the other day tell me he wanted a couple extra ones because he was going to grind on with his belt grinder and make the make some jetting changes on his carburetor. And I thought, well, good luck with that one. But uh, because it's very important that those are done with the computer controlled equipment to get the exact correct profile and deliver the correct amounts of fuel at different parts in the power bend. And uh, so that low pressure signal is the whole secret to how it adjusts and compensates for, for changes in elevation and temperature. And the fuel, they've got some low, uh, some, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, some videos that show the fuel creeping up that metering rod and uh, slow motion videos. And it goes actually about three quarters of the way up. 
So that's really all there is to that part of it. Now there's also another tuning component to the carburetor and that is the power jet, which is that screw right there by my thumb. And that, you can see it's got a line here that goes from there down to the float bowl. And then it also compensates with elevation changes because the vacuum is gonna change as you go up in elevation. And so it will draw less fuel out of the float bowl. And you can, this is just a, basically kind of like a, you can think of it as like a kind of a shutoff valve. So it's, it's just a needle. And as you open it up, you're gonna give it more fuel. So counterclockwise is more fuel. Clockwise will be less fuel, but that's for just the higher RPM part of the power bands. Hardly ever do you have to mess with that. It's really uncommon. But the uh, metering rod controls most of your power band, especially the low RPM stuff. And then the power jet controls high RPM. And that's really all there is to it. It's uh, kind of a bulletproof system, works very well. That's all for now.